Cat, it's Maximus here, this time with a review of the Dynamic Tools 3 8 inch Offset Flex Flare Nut Crow's Foot Socket Set. Now, this is a promotional product made by Gray's, G-R-A-Y, Canada, which is an old time, been around since 1912, so more than 100 year old Canadian manufacturer of tools. And since Gray's Pneumatic, G-R-E-Y, is really common, is, well, reasonably common, there's in North America, sold at places like CarQuest. Uh, Gray Canada has decided to market their tools in the United States under the D Dynamic brand, with Dynamic covering more of the common type of types of socketry, and then Gray's, or the actual Gray brand, being more towards industrial, where they're selling large socketry and wrenches as well as well as other normal stuff. These, I think, are pretty re reasonable for their price. It's a 10-piece set metric, 7-piece set fractional, or SAE. And for right around 125 bucks, you can get all 17 pieces here, which is actually pretty decent. They are Taiwanese-made, come on these metal rails. Seem reasonably heavy-duty. Do have nice roll stamping, which I like a lot better than... A fairly famous set of these sockets I reviewed probably five more than five years ago one of my early videos probably seven years ago now the Harbor Freight Pittsburgh of the same version and Vim and some other manufacturers have had them and they seem to in the last few years are uh, have made a comeback because I was looking and actually found several different brands one of them being the dynamic tools as with trying to hit, have decent quality steel, decent quality manufacturing, and hitting certain price points, they are doing some of the things. I mean, these are an expensive socket. It's not just broaching a socket because you have to basically broach and manufacture this whole lower end. And then you have to forge out, broach, cut, and machine the actual crow's foot portion. With the these are held together by screws. There's just a lot of machine at work. You have to forge two separate components just to make a single socket. So really, it's a pretty competitive price. And really, $125 for all of these sockets. I just reviewed the Icon quarter-inch drive uh, universal short well sockets. And you were getting 17 pieces for $180 or something. So you're getting a lot of steel. For the price but some things they do as we can see both of these actually have the same outer diameter but we can see the legs are a lot thicker on one socket than the other this is the 14 the 13 and the 14 so part of how they try to save some expenses each size socket has to have separate forging dies so what they do here is they forge out the 13 and the 14 out of the same stock and they just simply broach the 14 a little bit larger so it ends up making the smaller one, the 13, look like it has extra thick walls. And that's something that actually is relatively common with socketry just because it's just so expensive to forge out this stuff. And forging tool steels does wear out dies pretty quickly. Now, I'll also say about the sizing, I think they did a pretty, it's a pretty intelligent job. What they've decided to do here is have no skip sizing, but I think to hit a price point, these sets are a little bit short. Really should have been like a 12 piece set for the metric and maybe um, an eight piece set for the fractional. The metric goes from 10 through 19 millimeter and the 16, 17, 18, and 19 are of these larger size ones, which is smart and, I, and the Pittsburgh does that too. And that's just because of the level of forces that are involved with these sockets. Once you start going up into 16, 17 millimeter uh, banjo bolts and, excuse me, not banjo bolts, but flare knots, they can get pretty stuck and actually need quite a bit of force. They do have a little extension so they can really seat on fully, which seems to be a common feature of these types of sockets. But once again, once you get up to the bigger sizes, there's a lot more stress. And so it is nice to see that they have compensated for that by putting them in a larger socket body. When running these tools, 
they're just designed to make it easier to access awkward angles. If you're ever going to use, you know, you'd use these with a ratchet or with an extension. And once again, you can get just at just about any kind of angle you really need to. But if you're ever to use them like this as just like a standard right angle wrench, like a normal crow's foot. And certainly what I've seen online is this is just the easiest way to break these because you have all this stress. Kind of a little narrow area here and rather than like a. I guess a twisting force, this bending force here really just wants to pull this socket away and it oftentimes will shear the screw. And I think that's why they use a screw is that the intention is, is in many situations, the screw will end up failing and you can replace that. Anyway, when you use it like this, like a regular crow's foot, you have to remember that the hinge is going to be the weakest point and really you should be using an actual crow's foot and a breaker bar in those situations just so you have a heavier duty setup and it's just a one note other than that checking some of the sizing here we'll do the 14 what I was noticing is on these grays uh, they seem to have just a little bit tighter machining just a little bit less play there Still a bit of play. Really like to see flare nut wrenches be super tight, but these these are okay. They're not too bad. What I was noticing is they are better than the uh, old Pittsburghs. The old Pittsburghs really had some pretty wide tolerances in there, and these fasteners really wobble around. So I do appreciate just having a little bit tighter tolerances. But this actually works out for me in another way. I had these Pittsburghs for the longest time, and I guess I kind of always assumed these sets, I mean, these Pittsburghs were famous for being at Harbor Freight for about three months and then just disappeared. But the thing I was noticing is that, well, you'll have to forgive that they're, forgive my over zooming, they're organized in different directions here. But I was noticing on the Pittsburghs that there are only two larger sizes in the metric. And the fact that the fractional set of the Pittsburgh was an eight piece set. So it turns out that what the Pittsburgh dig it did is give you an eight and a nine millimeter. But they decided to skip the 18 and the 16. So dynamic, I will give them credit. At least you're getting a no skips because you're getting the 16 and the 18 here. So what I'm going to end up doing, oh, and as far as the SAE is concerned, they didn't give you a 5 16. They started at 3 eighths through 3 quarter inch. Really should have made that an 8 piece. So all I end up doing is taking the 8 and 9 millimeter from this Pittsburgh here and adding these to the dynamic set as well as the 5 16 just to help really complete these dynamic tool sets so I'll end up having a and just how it worked out I'll end up having an 8 piece set and a nice complete 12 piece set of the metric otherwise for the price I think they're great and I think they're right around what the prices of these Pittsburghs were plus they have roll stamping which is easier to see Anyway, do have a link in the description and really appreciate everybody who's been watching. See you next time.